Welcome to Debaco University, where here we're going to be looking at determining and glass density and what can it can tell us about evidence that might be found at a crime scene. So glass density and refractive index are both used most successfully in classifying glass particles. This is a class characteristic, so we want to keep this in mind. It's not an individual characteristic, it's only a class characteristic. And this allows us only to exclude glass fragments that may have originated from different sources. Can't tell us it came from the front window. It can always tell us it came maybe from a window uh, compared to maybe um, glass that might be in a canning jar, for example, or a mirror, for example, might be different types of glass. So this density can allow us to classify that. Now looking at different densities, or a little chart here of different densities, window glass does not have a uniform density. So you want to take sam samples from different locations. Uh, the edge of te tempered glass is denser than the interior, so keep that in mind if you are looking at tempered glass. And there's a database of glass samples for comparison, so I've just provided you with a couple densities here of various materials, just for the sense of comparison. Keep in mind the densest is that flint or optical glass, and it's got 7.2 grams per centimeters cubed, all the way down to sand being only 1.52 grams per centimeters cubed. Now when we determine the density, how do we go about this? Well, each type of glass has a specific density to allow for these comparisons to occur. Density, capital D here, is calculated by dividing the mass uh, divided by the volume. So keep in mind that the reason why this is in a heart we want to think about kind of like M over V. So if we look at the very top here, the top of the heart kind of looks like an M, and the bottom side here kind of looks like a V. So that's an easy way to remember, it's mass over volume. And we want to do this by kind of getting the weighing, the substance getting the mass of the particular glass that we have, and then the volume is usually found by the displacement method because its shape tends to be irregular. The formula for calculating density then can be applied and you can get the density of the glass and that can help you potentially or at least narrow down what type of glass you have found and are looking at identifying.